What's up guys, I'm Jake and I run a 3D printing business called Why He Designs. People often ask me what printers I use and what I recommend, whether they're for personal projects or for starting your own print farm. So I'll be talking a bit about each printer I've purchased, what kinds of products I've made on them, and which are currently being used in my print farm. I've officially been in business for almost a year, but I started 3D printing back in 2020. Over the last three years, I've used more than 10 different models from seven different brands. I've purchased eight models from five brands and currently use seven models of different 3D printers. My print farm has grown a lot and I currently have 14 active printers. Let's start out with my very first printer, the Artillery Sidewinder X1. I got this printer in November of 2020 and even though I don't use it as much as I once did because of my faster and more capable printers like the Sovols and Bamboos, I still use it on a weekly basis. I learned a lot from this machine, like what hardware specs are important, what slicer settings to change, and how to repair and upgrade your 3D printer. Artillery now makes the Artillery Sidewinder X2, and it costs around $300. If that fits your budget, I definitely recommend it. Next up, the Ender 3 V2. But wait, where is it? Oh yeah, I sold. Looking back on my experience with the Ender 3, there were quite a few highs and lows. I learned a lot. I had to fix and upgrade way more things in my Sidewinder, and I had to learn a lot more about slicing. I eventually got it to a pretty reliable point, but at the end of the day, the build volume was on the smaller side. It was my slowest printer, and the quality of the finished parts just weren't where I want my products to be. I know there's some die-hard Ender 3 fans out there who think it's a rite of passage to struggle with a cheap printer, before getting something nicer. But in 2023, there's just too many good options to even waste your time and money on an Ender 3. Unless you find someone like me who's willing to sell their older printer at a deep discount. About a year ago, when I created my website and started selling my designs, I bought three CR10 V2s. I've been very happy with these machines. At the time, they checked some important boxes for me, including having a large build volume, which I need for some of my products, like these trays, for the handler organization system. I could print them straight across instead of at an angle on a smaller printer. The three machines can also share parts if needed because eventually you're gonna run into some sort of problem when 3D printing. And these printers were on sale for $250, which let me get three for the same price as two Sidewinders, which were around $350 a year ago, or even one Prusa. After a couple months, my business was ramping up and I needed even more printers. Luckily, I backed the Anchor Make M5s on Kickstarter last summer. After several months of waiting, they finally arrived and were my fastest and smartest printers. Until I bought a bamboo. The Anchor Make M5 comes stock with higher end features like auto bed leveling, a full metal hot end that goes up to 300 degrees Celsius, a camera, and even an AI system that is supposed to alert you if your print isn't going to plan. I also think it's one of my cooler looking printers. It's obvious that Anchor spent a lot of time designing it to set it apart from cheaper printers that share the same bed slinger style. Everything from the touch screen to the temperature indicator light makes this printer feel like a finished product and less like a project. Less time messing with a cheap printer means more time producing products. Since these printers have a decent sized build volume and are faster than your average bed slinger, they've been great for my XL packout bins. They're one of my most popular products, so I run these printers a lot. Also, the direct drive extruder prints TPU pretty reliably, so I use the Anchor Makes to produce why he designs Nolster Packout Organizer Bins. Even though competition is fierce around the Anchor Makes price point, I still recommend it if it fits your needs and budget. Last fall, a new budget printer, which I classify as less than $300, came to market, the Soval SV06. This printer really impressed me at the start. It was packaged nicely, assembles quickly, and seemed to have good build quality. Until I experienced a slight extruder problem. and I also had a belt tensioning issue wreaking havoc on some of my prints, 
but I have since resolved those and had no issues since. This printer has an all metal hot end and a direct drive extruder, which makes it great for PETG. There's also a removable PEI sheet and auto bed leveling. Although the build volume is on the smaller side, it works great for my smaller products like pack out rail adapters all the way up to my XL cups. If this isn't your first 3D printing video ever, you probably see the Soval's resemblance to the Prusa Mark III. The Mark III is one of the most popular and well-respected printers for hobbyists and also print farms. That's why it's so cool that the Soval is under $300 when a Prusa is more than twice the price. Similar to Ender 3 fans, I know there's an even stronger Prusa community who endlessly debate open source versus closed source and building printers versus 90% or more assembled ones. But I think that debate would be good for another video. If you're in the market for a budget printer, I definitely recommend the Soval SV06. I'll have a link in the description below. This spring, I finally caved and bought a Bamboo Lab P1P. You probably already know what I'm gonna say. It sucks. Just kidding, this printer is awesome. And Bamboo Lab has only made it better. The price has come down, and it now includes an LED light and a camera. A few months ago, I uploaded a first impressions video, and I'm working on a more comprehensive review and comparison. If you have specific questions you want me to address, please comment below, and don't forget to subscribe to get notified of that future video. My first P1P is the only one to have had two small problems. It sometimes makes a weird clicking noise, but I haven't experienced any quality issues. And I've had one faulty textured plate where the coating is flaking off. But Bamboo Lab did send out a replacement, which was nice. Since my first P1P was so awesome, I bought another. And another. And another. And when they recently lowered the price, I bought another. All the P1Ps have really helped increase the quality of my products and decreased my production times. It's also nice having multiple printers because I can keep different ones optimized for specific products. The super fast printing speeds also makes them great for prototyping, which is another reason why I can see myself getting even more in the future as my business continues to grow. Oh yeah, and I also got an X1C. This printer is almost identical to the P1P, but obviously it's fully enclosed. That helps if you want to print more exotic or finicky materials like carbon fiber filaments, polycarbonate, and ABS. The touch screen is a fan favorite feature. The user interface is great and the menus have a lot of detail but are still easy to navigate. There are also features like an additional chamber fan, a camera, LiDAR that inspects layer adhesion, and other sensors that I don't care that much about, but are cool to have. Overall, the X1C is a great printer, but since it has the highest price tag in my entire print farm, I'm not rushing to recommend this, even though it is objectively the best. The last printer I want to talk about is the SV06 Plus, the big brother of the SV06. And for the price, this printer might be the best deal out there. For under $400, this is a very capable printer. The build volume is on the larger side. It can print faster than its little brother, and it includes features like a nice touch screen. My only gripe is the unique nozzle design, but there is a quick mod you can do to make it Volcano Nozzle compatible. If you have the SV06 Plus and want to see how I did that, make sure to comment below. For the last few months, this printer has been a workhorse for many different products. I print lots of packout rail adapters because I can print multiple at a time, Due to the large build area, it prints bins faster than on the small sole wall, or I use the full size of it with longer items like the wall mounts. Thanks for checking out my print farm. I know I kept my opinions kind of brief in this video, so if you have specific questions, please comment below. I'm working on a more detailed comparison video, so stay tuned for that. Also, I have some cool expansion plans for my print farm that I hope will organize and streamline my workflow. As always, smash the like button and subscribe to see more of my content. See ya!